Thanks for tuning in. I'm Tommy Campbell. I'm still bald, and I am back in my basement after a week away, and I'm very grateful to have an audience that loves what I do here and missed me. Thanks for all the messages. Defeated former President Donald Trump officially returned to the campaign trail, and although his crowd sizes have decreased, the stupid has managed to increase, along with wacko appearances from Ted Nugent and Mike Lindell to dial up the crazy while Trump competes with Change Your Name Ron DeSantis, who is fumbling through a book tour that's just a bunch of thinly veiled rallies. Did you serve? I did. Where where'd you serve? Marine. Me too. What was your MOF? I was special. Oh, I see. Okay. Wait, oh, fantastic. I flew into places. Okay, where were you? Dark places. Where were you stationed? I, I uh, can't go into detail. Okay. But I can This interview's over for Oh yeah, he's special. Definitely special. And can't answer because he's totally full of it. Even the SEAL Team 6 guy will tell you every bit of action he's ever been in, and this fella is suddenly secret Chuck Norris at an airstrip on a Saturday for a little Ted Nugent, Mike Pillow, and Cheeto. It is pouring MAGA tears. I have a laugh with Trump's primetime softball shoulder rub interview with Hannity, talk to Santis pudding fingers, mock the winners at the latest rallies. By popular demand, I have a hilarious new genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book, and more. After Stormy Daniels laughed at my little toad, we were watching Shark Week, and I was thinking of ways to funnel the hush money, okay? This is really cool. According to two sources familiar with the incident, during a private plane trip from Tallahassee to Washington, D.C. in March of 2019, Ron DeSantis enjoyed a chocolate pudding dessert by eating it with three of his fingers. Yes, and it's one of those things where you look at them and you're like, yeah I, yeah, I believe it. Now, enough people have talked about this that it actually came up in an interview with Piers Morgan. Have you ever eaten a chocolate pudding with three fingers? I don't remember ever doing that. I'm telling you, maybe when I was a kid, but it's interesting. You know, there's a lot of people when you're when they go at you. Sometimes they have like really good ammunition, like you're a crook, you did this, you did that. For me, they're talking about pudding. Like, is that really the best you got? Okay, bring it on. But now you're not having puddings. No, no, no pudding. That dumb, no way. It's sugar, man. Doesn't fully deny it there. He just doesn't recall, which means it likely happened. And there may be a picture out there, so I'll just not recall it. I just realized that at certain angles, DeSantis is very Kenneth Copeland. Now that you see it, I don't think you can unsee it. Well, first of all, uh, DeSantis is the Trojan horse we thought he was. Uh, I just want to put that out there, how disgusting he is. Um, he Remember, everybody, he met with Dominion lawyers on uh, find, figuring out a way to make it easier to sue people for defamation like my pillow and Mike Lindell. Um, I love watching Tom Selleck's slow cousin go after DeSantis. This Trojan horse eating pudding with three fingers so he can slip inside and make it easier to sue for a word that still doesn't exist, Mike. Defamation, not a real thing. It truly is the battle of the dum-dums. And DeSantis is such a pudding-fingered Trojan horse that he even changed the pronunciation of his name. I am Ron DeSantis. I'm Ron DeSantis. I am Ron DeSantis. This is Governor Ron DeSantis. Hello, this is Governor Ron DeSantis wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Governor Ron DeSantis and I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Hi, I'm Governor Ron DeSantis and I want to congratulate all of you at Rumble as you... In 2018, the Tampa Bay Times reported that DeSantis's high school nickname was D and that he liked that pronunciation better. D is the first letter of your last name, Ron. You can still be called D and pronounce your name correctly. Not that hard. I gave them tapes of storage areas. I gave it to them. I could have held that back. I wasn't holding anything back that I cared about. I gave them tape. But you know the tape they don't want me to reveal? If possible. They've asked me, and I've, I've so far adhered to it. The raid itself. Wait a we minute. Have I'll take that tape, I know and I'll would. air that tape. Everybody would take that tape. Well, I'll mask it first. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I have tape, but they think yeah. it might be dangerous because of the faces and everything else, and I understand they that. They get pixel them out. But I have tapes of the raid, mm -hmm. and the raid is terrible. And the way they treated people is terrible. And the way they treat people now is unbelievable. They ask innocent people, please go in and blah, blah, blah. But, that, but that, this is getting but a
If Trump had anything that could help his story, any tape whatsoever, he'd be sending it to every news source. It would be on your PS5, Netflix, OnlyFans, Pornhub. It would be everywhere. He would be sending DVDs to your house, AOL, internet style. You have to watch this. It's very important, okay? Get them their rights. So the January 6th prisoners, she's got this book, and this book has hundreds of letters from the actual prisoners. Tell us a little bit more. That's correct. This book was compiled... Uh, so that we could see what they're going through, because what they're going through is horrific. It's truly horrific, and they, they go in great detail about what is happening to them. And, and the proceeds of this book support the cause, but also... There Are the pages made of Kleenex? Because it sure sounds like you have an entire book of MAGA tears. Trump held a rally in Waco, Texas, because if you're going to have a meeting for your anti-democracy, gun-crazy, MAGA cult, you may as well have it in the city known for the longest shootout in American law enforcement history and a 51-day siege that left over 80 dead. The low-attended event even featured music and a speech by Ted Nugent, who said this. I want my money back! I didn't authorize any money to Ukraine to some homosexual weight weirdo! I want... First off, Zelensky is not gay, so I don't get why he's making that leap. But the disturbing thing is that Ted is making it in a very derogatory way. He's suggesting that Zelensky is gay, and that's super creepy, and that's why we should be worried about him. But you know what's super creepy? Ted Nugent's past. On VH1's Behind the Music in 1998, Ted Nugent openly admitted having affairs with several underage girls and said, I was addicted to girls. It was hopeless. It was beautiful. Ted even legally adopted an underage girl, which meant she legally became his daughter, who he went on to have a relationship with and gave her STDs. Ted even released a song titled Jailbait, which is about his love of girls as young as 12 and 13. Trump had Ted at the White House. Ted is far past weirdo, he's disgusting, and his patriot gun persona is a joke. He's just another Trump supporter that has conned MAGA with his camouflage, even though he went to great lengths to avoid military service. In a 1977 interview with High Times Magazine, Ted Nugent said, 30 days before his military physical, he started eating junk food 24-7, quit showering, and days before the physical, he crapped his pants. Okay, wait, he's just describing Donald Trump's life. But he also took meth, and this led him to getting a 4F, not acceptable for military service. This is MAGA. For all my regular viewers and those new to the show, thank you. I'm glad you found me. For several months, I've been reading a genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book. I do this once a week, and it's been pretty wild. In this section, we are at her place of work, about to search for an intentionally missing hamster. Let's get back to it. Yes, coins are hard. If you don't believe me, grab one from your pocket and throw it at your windshield and see what happens. Or maybe your TV if it's tuned to MSNDC or CNN fake news. So Ted's toss led to a little chip in a dancer's tooth, and she was distraught over all of it. Fortunately, Ted took responsibility, like that time he manned up and flew back from Cancun. He assured Craig that he was just caught up in the topless tornado excitement and felt obliged to give her whatever he had. In his defense, Ted did note that it was underhand and that this demonstrated he wasn't out to harm her. I find it very attractive when he wears his lawyer hat. So much more than when my hub's Jason wears his Tiger King hat, stuffs me in the dog crate, and drives around town. He thinks it's funny to watch me slide around the back while he hits some potholes. Folks, you don't need couples therapy. You just need a half a tank of regular, an F-150, and that crate from the dog you got for Christmas and forgot about by Boxing Day. Ted swore to make it right, and later turned with some real American money. The good paper kind to get it fixed. She was still a bit frustrated about the whole thing, and I reminded her that while she had a temporary little bit of missing tooth, I was stuck with what Jason calls my old corncob face hole. I was going to get these multicolored things fixed one day, and that was not a threat. It's a promise. Craig gave Ted a big, old, hard, greasy talking to, and from that moment on, Lady Buns put up a sign that said, no foreign currency. So yeah, I'm on the pole, reflecting in the ceiling mirror, and my mind in this moment of time before the B-pole takes me off the A-pole. When we were not sweeping up stray bills, Craig had been known to personally use it for canceling a dancer who had gone over her time, or in this case, one that was not on the schedule.
I don't know how long I've been up here because there's no rock music playing to time my morning hot moves with. My eyes were closed and I did one perfect spin around the pole when the net went right over my head. This gopher got snared, y'all. I flayed my arms and opened my eyes trying to peer through my now lopsided decorative glasses. You know, the ones that Jason gave me from his ex's adult store schoolgirl outfit? It was like a fairy tale. If you've enjoyed this genuine page from Low Rent Booze Burp's latest book, let me know in the comments and I'll see about reading another sometime soon. I will not go after President Trump. I called Ted Cruz's office and I told them that if they don't start speaking up for Donald Trump, that when I go to vote, I'm going to vote for President Trump alone and walk away. He doesn't like Cruz now? Wait till this fella finds out Ted Cruz tips strippers with coins. My son went back to kindergarten on Monday. He loves school, and since then, I've had to shield him from the news so he's not terrified of learning and socializing. I have said this again and again. This only happens on the regular in one country, and it's the one with all the guns. Duh. As long as people value their right to possess a weapon of war over the right for kids to survive a day at school, it's going to keep happening. I've been through all the stupid solutions pitched by NRA-owned politicians, like having man traps and turning schools into compounds, but those are just nonsense to keep people armed. It is insane. Look at this one. Here's a dry erase board that turns into a bulletproof safe room. Not very easily either. In that deafening, terrifying situation, you're just gonna drag this thing open and calmly get the kids into a place that, yes, has great walls, but a false ceiling that anyone with minor determination could climb into. If things are being burnt down again and again, maybe look at taking away the lighters. Sure, someone could still rub two sticks together, but it's pretty darn tricky to pull off. Stop making it easy for people to kill each other. Can Marjorie just get the divorce going so I don't have this guy in my face? MAGA tears. Take some friendly advice. Choose a path, either political journalism or comedy. MAGA tears. I'm guessing either his single mom or boyfriend is behind the camera. Eh, most likely both. Let's go Brandon forever. MAGA tears. Pathetically childish and repetitively predictable. MAGA tears. Thanks so much for watching. Help me out by sharing this video and following me on social media. This costs you nothing and makes a huge difference. I am a one-man show here from script to screen, the editing, even the graphics. If you can afford to, please throw me a tip with the easy PayPal link or hit that super thanks button and be sure to check out my merch that go great with those MAGA tears. I am a stand-up comedian, I've played in 35 countries, have toured with Jim Jeffries for nearly 10 years, and I have three albums that you can stream on Spotify and Apple Music, or catch them on SiriusXM. Thanks for watching. Life's short, be cool, be kind, take care.